<laughs> Good morning once again, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to welcome you to this second session of the day where we're going to consider the draft civil aviation aerodrome design and operation regulations. The draft aerodrome design and operation regulations 2021 are a, a set of regulation that uh, was hived off the former civil aviation aerodromes regulation. If you remember, in 2013, we had civil aviation aerodromes regulations. These regulations have been dismembered to give uh, three regulations, the design and operations regulation, heliports regulation, and the aerodrome certification licensing and registration regulations. So to start us off today, we're going to look at the design and operations regulations, which are a transposition of ICAO Annex 14, Volume 1. To help us go through this regulation is one of our aerodromes inspectors, Engineer John Akinua, and uh, allow me to welcome Engineer Akinua to take us through these regulations. Uh, good morning. My name is John Akinua, yeah, and I'm going to take us through the Civil Aviation Aerodrome Design and Operations Regulations uh, 2021. Yeah, I'm uh, going to share the, the main document and uh, later I'll uh, go to the matrix of the regulation. So as I, I share the document, it is uh, divided into 15 parts, and uh, we also have uh, 11 schedules to support the, the regulations. In the schedule, we have the supplementary materials and you also have the the uh, the, the figures and uh, and tables yeah i hope we are able to to get the the document i don't know if it's visible Uh, so, Uh, as I had said, uh, the, the document is uh, divided into 15 parts. Part one is the preliminary provisions. And then we have uh, part two as a construction of aerodromes. Then uh, we have the obligation of uh, aerodrome operators. We have part four as aerodrome data. Part five as uh, aerodrome physical characteristics. And then uh, part six is uh, obstacle restriction and uh, removal. Part seven is uh, visual aids for navigation. Part eight, we have uh, the visual aids denoting obstacles. Part nine is uh, Yeah, part nine is the aerodrome. Uh, uh, part nine is visual aids denoting a restricted use areas. Part ten is electrical systems. Part eleven is uh, aerodrome operational services, equipment, installation, and uh, facilities. Uh, part twelve is aerodrome maintenance. 
then uh, but the thing is information to be reported to aeronautical information services we have general provision as part 14 and then the last part is the uh, offenses penalties and uh, transition provisions then uh, we have schedules the first schedule is the systematic management of safety at aerodromes and then we have the second schedule which is uh, part one it is it is uh, it's composed of two parts part one is methodology for determining aerodromes to be registered as category e aerodromes and part two is uh, the self-reporting form for category category e aerodromes then we have a uh, shielding of obstacles as the third schedule the fourth schedule is the color for aeronautical ground lights marking signs and uh, panels and then uh, fifth schedule aeronautical ground light characteristics mandatory instruction markings and information signs is uh, the sixth schedule and then the seventh schedule is requirement concerning design of taxis and guidance signs and then you have a uh, they should do location of lights and obstacles, guidance material supplementary to the regulation. And then we have the supplementary figures and tables to these regulations. And uh, the last schedule is on the reporting of uh, reporting format using the standard runway condition report, uh, which is uh, popularly known as the uh, global reporting format. It's a new format uh, of reporting uh, of assessing and reporting uh, runway surface conditions which is uh, coming into force in the month of november this year yeah so as i said initially the, these schedules are to support the the main body of the regulation that is the the 15 parts and uh, the regulations have been transposed from uh, the ikl annex 14 yeah where we have uh, adopted all the standards and uh, some of the recommended uh, practices yeah to be able to support our aerodrome design majorly and uh, this also the part of uh, of operations so from this point uh, allow me to to go to the to the matrix so i'll stop sharing this document and uh, share the matrix so that uh, we can highlight the the changes that has uh, that have come as a result of uh, of the, the the various amendments to the ICAO annex 14. Yeah, so on the interpretation part we have a new uh, a, a number of uh, uh, definitions that have been introduced to the regulations we have the adp that is air side uh, driver permit then we have a uh, aircraft classification uh, rating yeah you'll notice that uh, sometimes in 2024 we'll uh, move from the Aircraft, aircraft classification number to aircraft classification uh, rating. So in this regulation, you'll find that we have uh, both the uh, aircraft classification number and the aircraft classification uh, rating as we prepare for the for that shift to the new uh, aerodrome uh, pavement strength uh, reporting. And then we have introduced a definition on uh, data accuracy data integrity and then uh, the, the, there was an, uh, an addition on uh, the definition of data quality so a new addition was uh, added that is all equivalent assurance level trans, uh, trans traceability timelines completeness and format and then uh, a new definition on cross with component was also introduced and we introduced the definition on uh, outer main gear wheel span. So all these defin definitions are as a result of the, the changes in the ICAO Annex 14 aerodrome design and uh, operations uh, volume one. Then we have the definition on uh, 
pavement cl uh, classification rating, as I said earlier, uh, we are expecting to have a change of the reporting of pavement strength uh, come 2024, where we'll uh, move from uh, ACN PCN to ACR PCR. Uh, that's why we introduced the, the, that definition, pavement classification rating. Then uh, I had said that uh, we are to have a new standard that is coming in, uh, into force in the month of uh, November this year. And uh, so we have a new definition also on uh, runway surface condition. So that was introduced. Then on the use of common reference system, that is a uh, regulation for par uh, paragraph two. Yeah, there's uh, a few changes on the mean sea level datum. Then uh, we continue with the use of common reference system, the Gregorian calendar. So th this was just some uh, rewarding for, for clarification. The next uh, on the categories of aerodrome and requirement for operation of uh, aerodromes, uh, we inserted uh, the word heliports. They are to be all inclusive. Then on regulation five, sub paragraph 2B, we revised the category B aerodromes to indicate that it comprises aerodromes available for use by domestic air traffic operation uh, with maximum certificate that take off mass exceeding 5,700. And it's also designated as a, as a point of entry and exit other than international aerodrome open for public use. Then a sub-regulation five, uh, regulation five, uh, regulation five sub-regulation 2E, that we revised the category E to, to read as a, uh, compressing aerodrome available for use only by domestic non-commercial air traffic of maximum certificated takeoff mass not exceeding 5,700 and uh, it's not open to public use. And then the, the next uh, change was in regulation seven, sub paragraph four C that is on the requirements for application of an aerodrome construction permit. Yeah, there was a, a, an addition there. We inserted the, the words written permission from the owner of the land or evidence of ownership of the proprietary interest in the land on which the aerodrome is to be constructed. Yeah, this uh, provision was not in the, in the previous regulation when somebody is applying for aerodrome construction permit. Yeah, and there was need for us to, to safeguard the interest of uh, interest of uh, land owners. And next is on the requirements of aerodrome design, that is regulation 10, sub paragraph 1C. Yeah, this uh, came as a result of uh, the provision in uh, the KO Annex, section 1.5.1, and uh, the new uh, requirement is to integrate architectural and infrastructure related requirements for the optimum implementation of the civil aviation security measures in accordance with the civil aviation security regulations, both in design and construction of new facilities and alteration to existing facilities at the aerodrome. Yeah, next is the regulation 10, sub paragraph 1E on the requirement of aerodrome design and you are to delete uh, that provision, integrate security measures in accordance with the civil aviation security regulation. And uh, 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 in the previous uh, uh, change, we, we, we have uh, rewarded this to have whatever is provided in 1.5.1. .1. Next, uh, is uh, we also introduced uh, uh, a sub paragraph F that is to take into account land use and environmental control measures. And then uh, construction of category aerodrome 
that regulation was deleted because it is uh, addressed in uh, <coughs> in regulation seven that is on construction of aerodrome and uh, there was no need to have a repetition of a construction of category E. And then uh, aerodrome design and master plan because of the changes introduced in uh, section 1.5.1 of the aerodrome design and operations. So we introduced a, a new regulation here that is 11, the aerodrome operator shall establish a master plan containing detailed plans for the development of aerodrome infrastructure for aerodromes deemed relevant to the authority. And uh, we continue on with the, with the requirements there in uh, subparagraph two and three and four. Next, uh, the issues of uh, an, approval of cons uh, an approval to construct category aerodrome. Yeah, this was deleted and uh, because it was covered in uh, regulation eight. And then uh, on aerodrome reference code, uh, regulation, uh, the, uh, uh, section 1.6.4 of the aerodrome design and regulation, uh, that is uh, Annex 14. So we deleted the, the, greatest, the greatest outer that we deleted the statement or the greatest outer main gear wheel span that is on the aerodrome reference code and then uh, there was the introduction of that table the table 12.12.3 uh, 12, uh, that, that is on uh, the regulation 12 uh, sub regulation 3 we introduced table s 11-1 in the 11 schedule and uh, deleted table S12-2 in uh, the 12th schedule. And then there was the specification, specific procedures for aerodrome design, regulation 13, sub one. And we were to insert the words when the aerodrome accommodates an aeroplane that exceeds the certified characteristic of the characteristics of the aerodrome, uh, the operator shall uh, assess compatibility between the operation of the aer uh, aeroplane and the uh, aerodrome infrastructure and develop and implement appropriate measures in order to maintain an acceptable level of safety. Yeah, this is when you have an aerodrome with a, with a, with, with, with a, uh, with a critical design aircraft or a group of aircraft, and then you may intend or you, you, you intend to use uh, an aircraft that has a, a more critical uh, characteristics that are considered higher than the, 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 the than the design or the group of design aircrafts. So that's where we, where we need this uh, this provision. Yeah. Next, uh, we go to that in some paragraph two. The aerodrome operator shall promulgate information con concerning alternative measures, operational procedures, and operating restrictions implemented at an aerodrome arising from sub one. I think I've explained that. And then uh, regulation 15, compliance with conditions. So we delete the word approved and instead use approval. The next uh, is regulation 16 sub one competence of operational and maintenance personnel. So the words personnel to perform activities for aerodrome operation and maintenance were deleted and replaced with operational and maintenance personnel to perform aerodrome activities. The same regulation sub two, we inserted the words contained in the guidance material provided by the authority. Uh, regulation 17, Sub five aerodrome operations and maintenance. We inserted this uh, statement: an aerodrome operator shall address any safety concerns identified by the authority in the course of surveillance inspection of the aerodrome and submit corrective action plans as required. And then uh, we deleted uh, sub regulation five, which uh, indicated this regulation shall not uh, apply to category aerodromes. And then responsibilities of the aerodrome operator inserted uh, uh, sub, uh, sub paragraph 
Then, which indicate uh, assess and report the runway surface condition and aerodrome movement area maintenance in accordance with the standard reporting format specified in the 12th schedule to these uh, regulations. And then on the responsibility of the aerodrome operator, that is uh, subparagraph O, inserted the words, the aerodrome operator shall provide a conducive work environment and the necessary working tools for the operational staff. Sub uh, regulation 29, sub one, that is inspection of aerodromes and unhindered access by inspectors of the authority. Replaced the, uh, what will replace that the, with the, the authority shall inspect and carry out tests on aerodrome facilities, services, equipment, document, records, and where applicable, verify safety management systems before an aerodrome license or certificate is issued or renewed, and subsequently at any other time for the purpose of ensuring safety, uh, of ensuring that safety at the aerodrome is maintained. Yeah, so on uh, revision 29 sub two, uh, we just reviewed the, the wording structure. Then, uh, Regulation 34, obligation of a uh, category E aerodrome. That was uh, just because of uh, the rearranging or renumbering the regulations. And then 35, we have uh, aerodrome data and related information. And th this information was inserted that the aerodrome operator shall measure and describe the following data as appropriate for each facility provided on an aerodrome. And there is a subparagraph A, B, and C, uh, B, C, and D. And then that is seven on aeronautical data. That is from uh, IKO Annex 14, Volume 1. Uh, Section 2.1.1, classification required to meet the needs of end user of aerodrome data, uh, aeronautical data. So the ideal requirements uh, were deleted, including some sub paragraph two, so that the earlier sub paragraph three is the new two and uh, sub paragraph four becomes three. And uh, sub four, sub paragraph four is a new inclusion. Then uh, five to 11 are also deleted. So we insert, that is on regulation data six sub two, the accuracy requirement for aeronautical data shall be based on upon a 95% confidence level. And in that respect, three types of position data shall be identified. So there are those uh, data that are, that are to be identified, the survey, the surveyed point, calculated points, and then the declared points. Uh, sub 36, uh, regulation 36, sub regulation 4, uh, digital data error detection techniques. This was a, a new requirement and it was uh, introduced in uh, sub regulation, uh, sub paragraph 4 of regulation 36. And then uh, regulation 37, sub 1, aerodrome reference point. So we deleted the word reference point after shall be established. Yeah, that is for clarity. Then uh, regulation 41, sub, -regu uh, sub paragraph six, aerodrome design and uh, related information. <coughs> that was from IKEA and XR 14, section 2.5.5. So we inserted the top elevation type marking and lighting even if of obstacles shall be reported to the Aeronautical Information Services Authority. And then uh, regulation 44, subparagraph so three, on the condition of movement area and related facilities. Yeah, we inserted the information uh, from uh, IQ Annex 14, section 2.9.3. So we inserted B for the runways inspection in addition to A where the runway surface conditions may have changed significantly due to meteorological condition. And then uh, regulation 46, subparagraph six, 
water on runway that was on uh, section 2.9.5 of uh, the aerodrome design and uh, operations with annex 14. you think that uh, pursuant to subregulation 5 the percentage coverage and depth of contaminants the method of assessment assignment of runway condition codes shall be in accordance with the provisions in uh, 12 schedule to these uh, regulations. Yeah, this is as a result of the the global reporting format. The, the provision I, I said earlier that it is coming into force in the month of November this year. And uh, the, the, the same follows in uh, sub paragraph seven, the aerodrome operator shall assess and report the runway condition code the air traffic services determined using the runway condition assessment matrix to facilitate a standard reporting format for international air transport. We have the same in uh, sub paragraph eight, that is air traffic services shall report the runway condition codes for each third of the runway submitted by the aerodrome operator in sub regulation seven to the flight crew to facilitate them determine whether it is safe to land in existing conditions. And then uh, regulation 49, subparagraph five, coordination between aeronautical information services and the and aerodrome authorities. From uh, provision of uh, annex 14, uh, volume one, section two, that, uh, point 13.3, we deleted in addition to 14 days uh, posted time. Yeah, then uh, the same uh, regulation, sub paragraph six, replaced uh, uh, for uh, the, the, the words for aeronautical data with the, the following statement that is required to meet the need for end user of aeronautical data. Uh, regulation 50, sub paragraph two, coordination between uh, aeronautical information services and uh, aerodrome authorities. So we moved, there was a uh, move some provision to indicate uh, to ensure timely provision of the information to aeronautical information services, close coordination between those services concerned shall be required. Uh, uh, that is how uh, we move from uh, sub regulation two to three. And then on regulation uh, 54, sub paragraph 11 on uh, wildlife strike hazard reduction at aerodromes. Uh, that's a paragraph 11 also introduced. An aerodrome operator shall appoint a wildlife coordinator or manager who is responsible and accountable for wildlife hazard management and personnel engaged in wildlife hazard control. Yeah, so we also, there was also another insertion, paragraph, sub paragraph 12, 13, and 14, yeah, as uh, indicated in the matrix. And then uh, regulation 62 on the choice of, pan, uh, uh, perm, uh, choice of maximum permissible crosswind component. Yeah, the, there was a change in the, the crosswind, crosswind wing to, to crosswind. And then uh, regulation 72, sub paragraph one on runway shoulders. Uh, some statement was deleted uh, after the, the amendment of annex 14, volume one, that is on uh, clause 3.2.1. So we delete and in a, we, we, we delete the word all E and the runway width is uh, raised than 60 meters and add or F. Uh, the same regulation sub paragraph two deleted the runway should that shall be provided for a runway where the code letter is F. And then uh, sub paragraph three, we inserted the words uh, for aeroplane, uh, aeroplanes with uh, outer main gear wheel span of nine meters up to, but not including 15 meters in between shoulders. 
and shells, so those ones were inserted. And uh, on the 72 subparagraph 2b, inserted uh, in regulation 71 sub uh, regulation 3b, 60 meters where the code letter is F with two or three engine aeroplane and then uh, and move sub paragraph 3b to b3c so sub uh, regulation 72 sub paragraph 2c so we have to insert the word with four or more engine aeroplane i think that one i was to read yeah we start with four or more engine aeroplane. Then uh, sub paragraph five, 3.2.4, the portion of a runway should be between the runway edge and the distance of 30 meters from the runway center line shall be prepared or constructed so as to be capable in the event of an aircraft running off the runway or supporting the aircraft without inducing structural damage to the aeroplane and of supporting ground vehicles which may operate on the shoulder. Yeah, so we have to insert uh, the new definition, sub-regulation 4, which was initially sub-regulation 5. So, regulation 72, sub-regulation 5 and 6, surface of, of runway shoulders. Uh, these were the provisions. Uh, in uh, ICAO Annex 14, Volume 1, and they were inserted as uh, sub regulations 5 and 6. Then on runway turn pads in uh, Regulation 73, 73 uh, there was uh, the deletion. So we have to delete the tabulation of the design of turn pad and replace the same with one on the outer main gear wheel span. That was from uh, Annex 14, Volume 1, Section 3.3.6. And then 3.3.7 uh, to delete sub regulation in quotes where severe weather conditions and resultant rolling of surface friction characteristics prevail. Aradia wheel to edge clearance of six meters should be provided where the code letter is E or F. And uh, to delete subdivision seven and rename subdivision eight to 14 to incorporate the change. So regulation 74, subdivision three, that is on the runway strips. Yeah, there was a, uh, the provision in uh, an, uh, IQ Annex 14 and uh, proposed or, or proposal to, was to change the lateral distance of the strip from 150 meters to read 140 meters for code 3 or code 4 and uh, from 75 meters to 70 meters for runway code 1 and 2. Then on uh, 74 sub 5 runway strips you have to insert the, these words a strip including a non instrument runway shall extend on each side of the center line of the runway and the, its extended center line throughout the length of the strip to a distance of at least uh, those words were to be inserted to what was uh, initially there and uh, then uh, on the same uh, regulation sub regulation 7 or to insert the words shall be permitted on any part of a runway strip of a precision approach runway delineated by the lower edges of the inner transition. So there are also some uh, provisions on the runway end safety area on sub, uh, regulation 76, sub regulation 3. As they are listed there, the runway end safety area shall extend from the end of the runway strip to a distance of at least 240 meters, where the code number is three or four, or reduce the length where an, an arresting system is installed. Then uh, 120 meters, where the code number is one or two, 
and the run with an instrument one or a UD strength where an arresting system is installed and uh, that meters where the code is one and uh, or two. And uh, run with an, with an instrument one. Then we have provisions on uh, clear with tax with Clears and tax risk, that is the regulation 77 sub 3. So this was as a result of the of the changes introduced in the in Annex 14, Volume 1. And uh, we had those two subparagraphs 75 meters for instrument runway and half the width of the runway strip for an instrument uh, runways. On taxways, we deleted the tabulation on design of taxways and replaced it with the tabulation of outer main gear wheel span. And then uh, there was a note that had been included in the in the regulation. That was note three. It, it was deleted, and the tabulation on the width of taxways renumbered. Subdivision five, from uh, subdivision five to four, and then uh, the requirements in uh, I care on X fourteen, section three point nine point four. We deleted the tabulation on the width of taxways and uh, replaced it with the amended table. Yeah, and then uh, there was uh, an amendment of the overall width of taxway. And it uh, showed us to 44, 38, 34, and uh, 25. In taxi strip, we deleted distances of the graded portion of the taxi strip and uh, replaced it with uh, A, B, C, D, E distances uh, with the new ones, that is A to F. And then uh, on the categories of aerodrome and requirement for operation of aerodrome, we introduced the word commercial to category B and C. Uh, regulation 7 sub regulation 3, we introduced D, uh, that is such other matters as the authority may prescribe. And then on regulation 9 sub regulation 1, the requirement for application of an aerodrome, we deleted the word aerodromes. And then uh, obstacle limitation surfaces, yeah, that nature should be surfaces, not service. Uh, but we inserted the word outer horizontal, so the, the, the word outer horizontal surface, and uh, as you can see in uh, regulation 91, so insert an outer horizontal surface. Insert, insert this wording, an outer horizontal surface is a horizontal plane around an aerodrome beyond the limits of the conical surface. It represents the level above which consideration needs to be given to the control of new obstacles in order to facilitate practicable and efficient instrument approach procedures and together with the conical and inner horizontal surfaces to ensure safe visual maneuvering in the vicinity of an aerodrome. And then sub two, an outer horizontal surface is established for every aerodrome where the aerodrome reference code is three or four. And then uh, for aerodrome reference uh, code three or four, the outer horizontal surface extends uh, from the outer and upper periphery of the conical surface to a minimum radius of 15,000 meters. That is 15 kilometers from the aerodrome reference point and uh, subregulation for the outer horizontal surface level shall be up to 150 meters height above aerodrome elevation. And then there was a provision on uh, wind direction indicators that is a sub, uh, regulation 113 sub regulation 3 so we inserted the words the wind direction indicator shall be in the form of a truncated cone made of fabric and shall have a minimum length of not less than 3.6 meters and a diameter at the larger end of not less than 0 0.9 meters and then uh, 
B to be constructed so as it gives a clear indication of the direction of the surface wind and a general indication of the wind speed. And then C, have a color or color selected as to make the wind direction indicator clearly visible and understandable from a height of at least 300 meters having regard, regard to background. And then D, where practicable, use a single color, preferably white or orange. And then there was the provision of, of where a combination of two colors is required to give adequate, adequate conspicuity against changing backgrounds, preferably the orange and the white, red and white or black and white, and shall be arra arranged in five al alternate bands, the first and the last bands being the darker color. So one, uh, 13, subdivision four, the words are the location of at least one wind direction indicator should be marked by a circular band of 15 meters in a diameter of and in diameter and 1.2 meters wide. That is the bud, and the bud should be centered about the wind direction indicator support and uh, should be in a color chosen to give adequate conspicuity, uh, preferably white. So we still have more provision on. Uh, 113, that is uh, Revolution 5. Uh, the provision should be made for illumination, for illuminate, illuminating at least one wind, uh, wind direction indicator at an aerodrome intended for use at night. Then uh, 115, sub uh, Revolution 2, on signaling, uh, signaling a lamp. A signaling lamp shall be capable of producing red, green, and white signals and of A being aimed manually at any target as required, then giving a signal in any color, in any one color followed by a signal in either of the two other colors and transmitting a message in any one of the three colors by most code up to a speed of at least four hours per minute. And then uh, when selecting the green light use shall be made of the restricted boundary of green as specified in the third schedule. Yeah, so those are additions in the signaling lamp. And uh, we continue with the same provision on the beams, uh, beams uh, uh, spread. And then on uh, regulation 116, uh, sub-regulation two, signaling panel and a signaling area uh, here, these words were included, we are provided the signal area shall A, be located so as to be visible from all angle of azimuth above an angle of 10 degrees, azimuth above an angle of 10 degrees above the horizontal where viewed, when viewed from a height of 300 meters. And then B, be an even horizontal surface at least nine meters square. And then have a chosen color to con contrast with the colors of the signal panels used. And it shall be surrounded by a white border, not less than 0 0.3 meters white. Now these are these are standards in uh, ICAO and X14, and uh, we were transposing them into these regulations. <clears throat> and then on, on markings, uh, we inserted the words on that is on para regulation 117 sub paragraph two, inserted the words, the order of importance of runways for display of runway marking shall be as follows. The first is the precision approach runway, second non-precision approach runways, and third non-instrument runways. And then uh, regulation 126 sub paragraph nine, on runway turn pad markings, yeah, which uh, we transposed from uh, section 5.2.9.6 of the uh, KO Annex 14, Volume 1, saying the design of the turn pad marking shall be such that when the cockpit of the aeroplane remains over the runway turn pad marking, the clearance distance between any wheel of the aeroplane landing gear and the edge of the runway turn pad shall not be less than those specified in Regulation 72. And then there was a new regulation on approach lighting system. 
then uh, those clarification on uh, 126 that is on the on the marking the, the run with turn pad marking shall be at least 15 centimeters in width and continuous in length uh, then uh, regulation 150 on uh, approach lighting system these are these are the the requirements the regulation applies to our room aerodromes intended for use at night and then uh, two approach lighting system shall be required for different types of approach runways as follows so there is an non-instrument runway so the provisions and then uh, non-precision approach runway and then precision runway precision approach runway category one and uh, the precision approach runway categories two and three and uh, then we go to markers so the, 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 this one was inserted especially because of uh, most of our runways in Kenya are unpaved so we needed to to have this uh, regulation that is insert this regulation applies to unpaved runways taxis and uh, paved taxiway where when required so markers shall be flangible and then those located near runway all taxis shall be sufficiently low to, pres to preserve clearance for propellers and for the engine pods of jet aircraft then you go to part 12 that is chapter 8 of the of ikeo annex 14 volume 1 yeah the, the whole section which was uh initially in part 14 of this regulation was moved to part 12 that is regulation 224 to regulation 227 and then uh <coughs> regulation 225 sub paragraph 3 we inserted the words an operator of an aerodrome intended for public use with scheduled commercial operations shall provide the required level of protection necessary for maintaining the minimum level of protection required for the appropriate category of the aerodrome. So uh, issues of uh, rescue and firefighting. And then uh, regulation 240, that is a provision of rescue equipment. And we inserted as uh, sub-regulation four, an operator in category other than the categories in uh, Subregulation two and three above shall provide and make available information concerning level of protection provided at the aerodrome. And then on uh, 232, that is regulation 232, sub paragraph two, rescue and firefighting service stations. There's this requirement, the base shall be of sufficient uh, vertical clearance from overhead obstruction for the largest vehicles and permit and permit passage of vehicles in both direction yeah this is uh, as a result of the the new design of uh, of fire tenders which are uh, far much larger than uh, what we have been used to and uh, so there, there there is need for us to to ensure that uh, our facilities are also at par with the with the new designs that are coming. And then uh, sub paragraph five of the same uh, regulation: in all fire station, there shall be a watch room for the reception of emergency calls. Sub paragraph six: the watch room shall be sited in a position which overlooks as much of the movement area as possible and then sub seven and eight all 
fire station shall be connected to a secondary that is standby electrical power supply to show continuous availability of essential equipment and facilities. And then a uh, fire station shall be provided with a public address systems so that details of the emergency, giving location, type of aircraft involved, preferential routing for aerodrome rescue and firefighting vehicles can be conveyed to crew members. Yeah, and uh, the, the, this uh, regulation and the, the, the subparagraphs are to to bring in uh, or to have some clarity on uh, the way we, we design our, our fire stations. Yeah, so that uh, we improve on our efficiency and uh, effectiveness in our, in, in, in our emergency response. Regulation 235, sub paragraph 5, that is requirement for rescue and uh, firefighting personnel. So there is this provision or requirement that all rescue and firefighting personnel shall possess a minimum level of physical and medical fitness to be able to perform the tasks associated with the rescue and firefighting operations. And then regulation 235, subparagraph 6, appropriate counseling of psychology therapy shall be provided to rescue and firefighting personnel responders who may have suffered from post-traumatic disorder after emergency. Uh, this was uh, introduced owing to the fact that uh, the, the firefighting personnel, the so, so some of the of the experiences they have, especially when dealing with uh, with emergencies, they can uh, cause trauma, and so there is there there is need for for us to to have a provision of uh, of them uh, having those counselling services. And then uh, two thirty six establishment of fire prevention unit and maintenance of fire prevention program. Uh, that regulation was moved from 245 to 236. And then uh, regulation 261, some sub paragraph two and three. So we inserted these words without prejudice to sub regulation one. Operators of category C, D, and E shall be required to ensure the aerodromes are maintained in good condition at all times to facilitate safe operations. And then uh, subparagraph three, or sub, pursuant to, that is subregulation three, pursuant to subregulation two, aerodromes in category C, D, and E may not require a maintenance program, but need to develop procedures to facilitate maintenance as required from time to time. Yeah, we noticed that uh, we, we were subjecting all uh, all categories of aerodrome to the same requirement as category A and uh, and B aerodromes. Yeah, so there, 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 there was this provision where we don't make it so restrictive for category C, D, and E, owing to the level of operation. Then uh, regulation 263, sub paragraph one, maintenance of movement and adjacent areas and uh, here we inserted the words this regulation applies to paved runways and then on exemption application that is uh, regulation 274 the word existing was inserted regulation 277 Conditions for operating an aerodrome. Yeah, so this regulation was deleted. So delete 277, a person shall not operate an aerodrome license certificated or registered under this regulation unless the facilities and characteristics of the aerodrome are, are effectively related, are effectively related and match the needs of the aircraft for which the aerodrome is intended. So this, uh, pro this regulation was deleted as it had been repeated in uh, regulation uh, 59. And then uh, 
the first schedule, safety management system. So there was a, a change to refer to regulation 18 and not 45. And then on the 11th schedule, supplementary figures and uh, tables to regulation. Uh, the, this was a, a change from uh, figures to the regulation. So there was uh, that introduction of supplementary figures and tables to the regulation instead of what was initially there, figures to the regulation. Yeah, uh, 12 schedule reporting format using standard runway condition report. So delete supplementary tables to the regulation and replace with reporting format using standard runway condition report. And then uh, that in schedule ACR PCR method of reporting pavement strength. So insert ACR PCR method of reporting pavement strength. Yeah, I had said earlier that uh, this uh, ACR PCR method is a new method of uh, reporting uh, runway pavement strength, which is a uh, or that uh, not run with pavement, but pavement strength because it also includes taxes and uh, an apron, and it is coming into force in uh, 2024. But uh, to prepare for the same, it was also included in uh, this regulation, and uh, that is a. Uh, That's, the, that, 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 that's my, my my last point. Maybe if uh, we have questions or any clarifications, so I'll give uh, I'll give it back to Amukon. Thank you, Jonah. Uh, I think the aerodrome design and operations regulations are very detailed and fairly technical set of regulations and the amendments that have gone into the regulations like has been uh, explained by Jonah are informed by changes in Annex 14 Volume 1, both changes that have uh, taken effect and some of those that are anticipated and therefore we have made provisions for that to allow us as a country to begin uh, operationalizing or getting used to the changes. For example, the format for reporting pavement strengths and format for reporting runway uh, surface conditions. Uh, we have received a number of comments in the question box, which we have addressed as much as possible. I, I go back to what Captain Gad Kamau had asked. He had asked about uh, confirming that compliance with standards apply only to those aerodromes that serve cross-board operations. And I can say, yes, ICAO standards and recommended practices are, are meant for international air navigation. However, it is important to recognize that uh, we, as a state, once we have adopted the requirements as provided for in Article 37 of the Chicago Convention, then those become applicable here. It is, it, it would create a very complicated industry if we had certain provisions applicable only to international operations and others to local operations, that would imply that we, our standards vary with what you're doing. Whether you are flying international, then we give you higher standards. And if you're flying domestic, we give you lower standards. However, we also take cognizance of what would be a, an overkill in terms of requirements and also make provisions for that. So that is what we would uh, respond to that. Okumu request asked about uh, how KCA enforce competence or requirements on aerodrome maintenance operations. Uh, and, uh, aerod or requirements on aerodrome maintenance and operations, and I believe this is relating to personnel competence. And as you're aware that it's part of our certification processes, we require that an aerodrome operator has uh, training programs for their personnel, both maintenance and operational. And we also would be giving additional guidance where required to support aerodromes in coming up with acceptable uh, training and qualification for aerodrome maintenance and uh, operational personnel. Lenin Jumba asked about uh, naming of aerodromes. Uh, ideally, is a prerogative of the operator of the aerodrome to uh, come up with a name. However, it is of help if the name of the aerodrome is 
in such a manner that it can help identify the aerodrome. And uh, for purposes of regulation and for purposes of oversight and for purposes of operation, only those names that have been duly notified and published in the aeronautical information publication then become the, 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 the official names for those aerodromes in as far as air navigation is concerned. I can see uh, Harrison Machio has a question regarding Regulation 9, 10, and 20. Uh, Mr. Machio, if you can be able to look at the bottom of your screen, you will see a participate button. So I have activated your participate button. If you click on participate, then you will have the stage and ask your question. So please click on participate at the bottom of your screen to activate your microphone and camera, if possible, and ask your question. Mr. Machio, go ahead. Mr. Machio, we have activated your participate button. It is at the bot bottom of your screen. Are you getting me now? Uh, thank you, Mr. Machio. You can go ahead with your question. I'm audible now. Yes, you're audible. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, my question is uh, in relation to um, Regulation 9. Regulation 9.4, that, that is application for an aerodrome construction permit. Uh, can I go ahead and ask the question? Yes, Bonamachio, you have the floor. You can go ahead and ask all your questions, yes. Okay. Um, this section requires that uh, when you are applying for a permit to construct your, your aerodrome, uh, you have to furnish A, B, C, D, and uh, finally E. Uh, I wanted us to split this regulation uh, so that he, uh, in the first place, if I'm applying to construct a, an aerodrome, there are some basics which I should provide to the authority uh, to help them make the decision. If, if, if for example, I am made to submit uh, architectural designs, uh, um, and then the site uh, of chosen is not acceptable to the authority. Um, designing an aerodrome uh, requires a lot of consultancy and it costs money. I cannot hire NACO, for example, to design for me an airport. Uh, I pay them uh, 100 and something million. Then when I come to the authority to uh, for the permit, they say, no, this site is not acceptable. So um, to, to me, the arrangement of six, this section uh, should have begun with the A, with the C. That is, I give the topographical map of the proposed aerodrome. Then it, uh, I, we, go to, uh, we go to D, evidence of land ownership. Then we go to finally B, aerodrome side data. That one, um, you, you have called it uh, aerodrome data. Aerodrome data and my searches that are already operational. So I could be giving you data on cargo, whatever, whatever. But this could be changed into aerodrome, um, um, aerodrome side data. I'm just giving you the, 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 the data on the side, characteristics of the wind or whatever, whatever. Uh, that way, it will make this uh, this section more meaningful, and also it will cost less money to the applicant. But if we cite it the way it is, 
um, then it is going to be very costly and you can pay a lot of money and end up with nothing. Uh, then maybe we can have um, section, from section four, we should have section five, which now talks about it, you providing the um, uh, detailed design. If, if, you have, uh, if you have been given the green light to go ahead, you now give the, um, the detailed design and you pay the applicable fee to the authority for them now to give you the permit. And uh, section 10, you say the period uh, you grant the permit for two years only. I don't understand why two, two years, because uh, from past experience, nobody can construct an airport in two years. Even, even in Kisumu, we have not finished some of the aspects of the terminal, like the cargo terminal and so on. So you can construct an aerodrome, an airport for up to 10 years and whatever. You start with phase one, maybe phase two and whatever. So these two years limitation, uh, what does it pertain to the uh, aerodrome operator? Then, then if we can go to regulation 20, Regulation 20 is talking about a storage of dangerous uh, substances in the airport. Uh, let me just scroll there. A person shall not store fuel, pyrotechnic materials, and other highly inflammable or dangerous goods at an aerodrome except with the permission of the authority authority here, I uh, mean in case here, and in accordance with the prescribed standards. Uh, I would say that the, uh, this, this regulation uh, should be left uh, to the aerodrome operator. It is the aerodrome operator uh, who, should, uh, who, who should know where these goods are being stored, and he should oversight the people who are storing or, or doing this kind of work, because if 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 we if we leave with the authority to do this, then it will be something like micromanaging the aerodrome operator, and uh, you may give permission to this person to store fuel at the airport. Whereas I don't have uh, a space to that person to store the fuel, so it will bring a kind of dichotomy as to who has the prevalence over the, the over the aerodrome um, uh, over the aerodrome master plan and operations. So I, I would urge the authority to look at this uh, and leave it to the aerodrome operator to determine some of these things. Uh, Chair, I submit. Thank you, Bonamachio, uh, for your questions. I'll allow my colleague uh, to answer questions regarding regulation 9 and 10 and then I'll address the questions regarding the questions regarding regulation 20 uh, thank you mr machio for your questions regarding um, regulation number regulation number nine indeed uh, when going through that particular provision you need to read uh, the whole of it as from uh, subregulation one until subregulation four we appreciate your comments in terms of the structuring of that particular regulation i think uh, we'll be able to take them on board however as we do so it's important that uh, uh, you appreciate the provisions of the subregulation two that says that an applicant for an aerodrome construction permit shall be considered for approval and then there are provisions that have been provided there maybe what can be done is a first approach on the grant of that particular approval to take care into your provisions but uh, the authority takes cognition of uh, other requirements before that particular uh, authorization is given before even we come to the detailed design there is the element of uh, 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 authorization from the relevant authorities proof of ownership of that particular area involvement of uh, the agency responsible for environment management and other provisions. So there are a series of provisions that ought to be adhered to by the applicant before we can be able to uh, process your applications. Over, over on that, I think uh, I also appreciate uh, 
your input on sub regulation four, we shall be able to look at it and uh, uh, be able to provide adequate feedback. Meanwhile, I will invite Mr. Kenya to comment on the same regulation and also regulation 10 as Rollins addresses regulation 20. Thank you, Mr. Kenya. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Buana Machio, for your comment on uh, Regulation uh, 9 and, uh, and Regulation 10. And uh, my colleague David has uh, <coughs> has given a, a, a good explanation towards that, and uh, we, 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 we take your, your, your comments and uh, we, we will look at the, the, the regulation to see if uh, there's there, there's need me to, to make it uh, more clear, especially on uh, that uh, sub regulation four, so that uh, we, we 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 are able to to communicate well. Uh, when I go to then I go to your comments on the regulation ten. That is on the on the duration of a uh, aerodrome construction permit. Yeah, and that is a uh, uh, sub regulation two, where it says that uh, the, the the duration of the aerodrome construction permit is uh, two years. And uh, the, the 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 spirit behind this regulation was that uh, if somebody is seeking for for aerodrome construction permit, then uh, uh, by 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 the by the end of two years they should have uh, started doing something instead of just uh, giving a, an aerodrome construction permit and then people uh, disappear and, uh, and nothing is happening. So that uh, we, we are able to know is is this proposed aerodrome really going to be to be constructed, uh, and of course nothing hinders the the proponent uh, the, the proponent of uh, uh, the, the aerodrome to to notify the authority on uh, maybe the challenges they have encountered uh, they have encountered and uh, encountered and and thus they are not able to to construct so we we introduced the two years uh, so, so that uh, we, we are not just giving uh, a construction permit which will, will, will never be affected so that at the uh, at the end of two years then we are able to to review the site because uh, other things may have uh, cropped up uh, the, 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 this is uh, as a result of uh, uh, other developments. You, you know, uh, air, airport development uh, attracts a lot of uh, other kind of development in this side, in, in, in this part of, uh, uh, in, in this region, where at the moment uh, somebody here, so or people here that uh, we have, uh, we have uh, an, an aerodrome that is coming up. Uh, Everybody runs towards that side to to get land. So uh, at the end of two years, we we may need to reevaluate the site. See, is it still viable to to have an aerodrome there? Maybe do we have new obstacles? So we we thought that by giving two years before somebody. Uh, Okay, by giving two years, uh, then it's important for someone to have uh, started uh, the, the, the construction. Otherwise, uh, uh, maybe after two years, we may not be able to to know if the if the site is is still viable. Yeah, so that that was the spirit. It, it's not that uh, after two years, if you are not done with construction, uh, that uh, you, you cannot continue, but. Uh, we, we we may as well be able to to look at the the, the, the regulation or the sub regulation and uh, see see the best uh, wording to to put there so that we we provide the necessary uh, clarity. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kinyua, for your response. Uh, I would like to 
respond to the question regarding Regulation 20. The orientation of that requirement that without the approval of, the, for, regarding the need to seek approval of the authority is in the context of uh, application of Annex 18 on safe transport of dangerous goods by air, which the authority then regulates the airport operator. What this means as the authority, we would not be bothered with control of the parties that, or we will not be approving the parties that uh, store dangerous goods, but we would be concerned with approving the aerodrome operators and their capacity to accept dangerous goods. So what that means is you do not accept dangerous goods in your airport if you do not have prior authorization from the authority. And then the people they, who come and uh, store dangerous goods or would like to store dangerous goods in your airport then comply with your requirements. However, it is also important to note that the regulation of safe transport of dangerous goods by the authority extends beyond shippers, packers, and carriers. So either way, the authority then it's involved in oversight of safe transport of dangerous goods by air. But in the context of aerodrome operators, our concern is do you have adequate arrangements, facility, equipment and space to safely accommodate what would be classified as dangerous goods? That would basically be our problem. So that there are those aerodromes in the aerodrome manuals and in the operation specifications would explicitly say that dangerous goods are not transportable through their facility. And that again, we would be able to check as authority and in our over, other oversight activities ensure compliance with such. I can see a question from Matthew Zogutu that this requirement on construction indeed should rest with the operator due to mandate existing in the act this uh, provision needs further review. We, we we acknowledge that, we acknowledge that, however, recognize that the regulations are aerodrome design and operations. So our concern as a regulator is, can we be able to first begin to interact with aerodrome operators at the design and approval for construction phase, instead of you going ahead to construct an aerodrome that then fails at certification standards? what would be of use there. So I think in order to allow us to effectively address these concerns, I would like to request uh, Machio and, and, and our colleague uh, Matthew Zogutu and the KA team, if we can receive a consolidated written uh, write-up on your specific issues on the regulations, I'm sure you might have much more than what you're able to raise in this session. That would help us to also package a comprehensive uh, response as well as uh, systematically take your recommendations to inform amendments in the new regulations so that we are on board in terms of the spirit and the letter of the regulations as being currently proposed. Uh, as I would, uh, as, as, as I just go over that, I note that these aerodrome design and operation regulations were meant to run between uh, 9 and, and, and 10 30 or thereabout but we have exceeded up to now we are about at 10 uh, at we are now about at quarter to 11 at quarter to 11 I would like to encourage that uh, we, we recognize your response Buona Machio that we will reward the regulation in view of the response we have provided. And uh, as I said, if we got a write-up, that would really be helpful to help us package this, uh, this, this, this rewarding in, 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 and, and take on board your views uh, as appropriate. Uh, I would like to remind us to spare a minute or two and take part in the poll. So that we have a poll section there, which will help us to improve the manner in which we engage with stakeholders. Uh, we are open to continuing to continue receiving written submission via the email address that uh, I have posted and we would like to encourage those who have uh, any any con observations to give us the, the observations 
in return to allow us to comprehensively take them on board. Uh, similarly, yes, anyone anyone is free to share with us a written submissions on the email address that I have posted there, kcas2021 at kcaa.or.ke. We will be looking forward to your written submission that can enhance the quality and the nature of regulations we are putting forth. So I would like to request that after you take your polls or as you take your polls, we take a five minutes break. We'll take only a five minutes break to allow our technical team uh, bring up the third session of the day the third session of the day, which is on draft heliports regulation 2021. So we'll be taking a five minutes break and then we go for the draft heliports regulation 2021.